Siva. Today I'm back with a new video and I'm going to be telling you guys about like my scoliosis, kyphosis kind of like story journey I guess you could say. I don't really know. I've seen some people do this before. I've tried to do this multiple times in like the past years but I've either like filmed and edited it and then like didn't like it and then just didn't upload it. I filmed one like two and a half I think years ago. And I posted that one um, when I still had my big brace on. It was like two minutes long and so a lot has changed since then, obviously. Yeah, this is kind of my story on all of that. So I'm gonna be reading notes off of my computer just to like make sure I don't forget anything because I have a strong feeling that I will because I try to like block this stuff out of my memory. This all started back in like early 2016, I would say. It was never really a big deal until my basketball started and that was I believe the fall of fifth grade, so fall of 2016. My team happened to be pretty good and I was always like decent at basketball. I was never like the one that could run super fast or was super athletic and all that stuff, but I was like decent. And we had been noticing that my leg, I would always tell my mom that my leg was going numb. Like it was really weird. Like I could, I would drag it um, because I couldn't feel it. But obviously like she didn't believe me because it was like, you sure were like, do you know what that is? You know. So I started noticing all of this, not like my leg going numb, my foot dragging all in the beginning of 2016, but my, I didn't get like super bad and like noticeable until I'd say around the fall, like August, September of 2016. That's when my parents started noticing it and that's when it got really bad. But I had always been super clumsy when I was little and I would never be able to walk like in a straight line. It was just, I was super clumsy. And I still am, but it's definitely not as bad. We still don't know if this had anything to do with it. It might have, it might not have, but we're not 100% sure still. Basically, I, when I was playing basketball, you could I would run up and down the court and I would be super slow and you could just see that I was running with one leg dragging behind me, just like, I couldn't move. You can just see me like running and there's like the girl I'm guarding and I'm just like, not moving. This is when we first noticed that something was like really wrong because as you can tell, like, it, I don't look right. <laughs> I just look crazy. So after a few games, I'd say halfway through the season, I started realizing like I can't do this anymore. So I had to quit even though I was so upset about it. I hated doing that because I'm always a person to be super like motivated and like I always want to like stick to something, I guess you would say, but I was super upset about it, but I had to because I literally couldn't run. So after that, my mom took me to the pediatrician. We went there and the doctor noticed that I had some scoliosis that had developed, which it was very minor at that time. It wasn't that bad at all, but I hadn't had any previously for the first 10 years of my life. So it was really weird. And so we went to get an x-ray later that day and it did confirm that yes, I did have pretty mild scoliosis at the time. But they recommended that I see a specialist because they had no idea what the leg numbing had to do with it. So we made an appointment for, I believe, February of the next year, so about six months later. Over the time of the six months, from around August or September to February, it got progressively worse to the point where I had to take the elevator at school because I couldn't walk up and down the stairs. We also took a trip to Colorado that year around November during Thanksgiving. And we went skiing and like ice skating and all that stuff. And I would have trouble walking up and down like the ski, like even not even the slopes. It was like the hills that would lead to the slopes, like because it was very hilly, obviously. So I couldn't walk up and down with it with my ski equipment. It was getting really bad to the point where like I was having trouble walking like anywhere. It ended up getting so bad that my mom called, I believe, after our Colorado trip, and she was like, sent them a video, this video that I just showed you. She said, "Is there any way that we can get her in earlier? Obviously, you can tell." it's getting worse and it's not going so well. They ended up getting me in about a month earlier, I would say. And over that month, it got progressively worse again. So about a month after our Colorado trip, we were at, um, we have this, it's like a downtown, like town center, like shopping place. And we were having dinner on Christmas Eve, but we had, or it was Christmas Eve Eve, is when we always go out to dinner, the 23rd of December. So we were eating out and we had to wait. So we just kind of walked around and shop it, shopped. And I couldn't walk. Like it just, I was super upset that we had to walk around because it was to a point where my parents thought I was faking it because it was really bad, but I wasn't. So fast forward a couple weeks, uh, it was around the 20th of January, I would say. We went into the specialist for the appointment 
and they ended up um, not finding anything like presumably wrong except for like my balance was off and obviously my leg was dragging which was really weird but they wanted an MRI so we didn't really know when that was gonna be we knew it was gonna be soon but they just like sent me home the next day I was in school got called out um, of school and I had my MRI that day and little did I know that would be the last time I'd go to school for like five weeks so on the way to the MRI we got a call from the doctor and I had gotten x-rays the day before and they saw like a weird gray spot so they wanted to admit me overnight and run a few tests and things but they were still gonna go ahead and go with the MRI. We still didn't know it was wrong, but I couldn't lay on my back because it was too painful. They didn't know what it was, so I had to be sedated. I remember waking up and just being super nauseous and I was super out of it and super loopy and I was throwing up, but they ended up finding out what was wrong like immediately after the MRI and so we didn't have to stay the night in the hospital. Um, but basically in this picture, you can see what had happened is that I had three cysts on my spinal column and it was caused by an excess of liquid that was draining from somewhere. I'm not exactly sure because I didn't really pay attention that much. I was like 10. It was causing these cysts to build. As you can see in the MRI, I had one inside my spinal cord, one halfway inside of my spinal cord and halfway out, and then one outside of my spinal cord. Mind you, these are all inside of my spine. So basically, we I went home that night and the only thing I can remember is like trying to walk to the car but I couldn't because I was so loopy so they wheeled me out to the car and I fell asleep in the back and I didn't I remember waking up the next afternoon and being like why, why didn't I go to school <laughs> like I was like it was really weird I didn't end up going to school because my parents already knew that I needed to have surgery soon so I think my appointment was on a Tuesday my MRI was on a Wednesday I didn't go to school Thursday or Friday and then on Friday I went like shopping with my mom just kind of hung out on Saturday, I hung out with my best friend because I couldn't see her for at least like a couple weeks. And then on Sunday, we had the consultation with the surgeon and they kind of walked um, my parents and me through it. And <laughs> the one thing I remember, it was like, are you sure you want to stay in the room for when they tell you what we're going to do? And then I remember the first thing he said was he, he started to use like, so basically what we're going to do is we're going to make an incision from like point A to point B and it was like, you know, like this long on my back. And I was like, never mind. So I went and I waited outside um, while I walked through it. I remember going to the Mexican restaurant with my parents after. So I remember the weirdest details. <laughs> the next day I went in at like, I believe it was around 5 a.m. And my surgery didn't start until it was seven or eight o'clock. But um, I just remember being starving and my mom was eating in front of me. And I'm like, it didn't start until a few hours after we got there. But all I know is that it lasted nine hours. I remember it started at eight or nine and it ended at five or six. Um, so it was definitely a long ordeal. I don't remember waking up right after before they take you to your room and stuff. I just remember waking up that night and I was obsessed with Dance Bombs at the time. And so I remember waking up and being like, Dance Bombs is on tonight, even though it was Monday and Dance Bombs was on on Tuesdays. That's what I remember and that's it for that entire day. The next day, um, Dance Moms was actually on, but I was too loopy still, and I couldn't watch it because <laughs> I kept falling asleep. But um, the next day, I kind of woke up a little bit, but I was still super nauseous from um, the anesthesia, and I did not have a good reaction to it. So I was like throwing up all day, and I was super uncomfortable. It was not fun. <laughs> the one thing I do remember from that day is that was the first time I ate in like two days, and it was great. Except I ate like a cinnamon roll from subway that was really good and then i threw it up immediately i remember getting a bunch of gifts from like my family and friends and stuff i'll put pictures here but one of my dad's co-workers gave me an entire banana cream pie from my favorite restaurant and i was shocked and i tried to eat like all of it and that did not go over well <laughs> so i remember that um on thursday i kind of was up I was still kind of like, ooh, like, I was very drugged, still very, very drugged. <laughs> I will insert a video here of me being like, mm, like crazy. Like, I'm just like laughing hysterically. On Thursday or Friday, obviously I don't remember exactly what day it was, I got fitted for my new brace and I didn't really know um, what it was because I just took measurements and stuff. And then I remember the next day, it was like Friday or Saturday, they came in with my brace and i was very upset because i didn't realize how invasive and how annoying it would be to wear this thing so that didn't go over so well as you can tell i 
hated it. Well, I went home on the Monday morning. So I was in the hospital for exactly a week. I went home Monday morning and I remember them telling me that I was only gonna be in my brace for eight or nine months and that I was out of physical activities for six months, which I was like, okay, I can deal with that. When I was like, oh, I'm only gonna be in my brace for eight or nine months, this is great. So I could, I had to wear my brace all the time if I was up and walking around unless I was laying in bed. Uh, when I got home, it was, the pain was still really bad. I couldn't shower on my own. I, at that point, I couldn't walk around. I was in my bed for a few weeks. Like I was in my bed for like a week and a half straight. Um, even when I had my brace on, I still could barely walk around. I had a walker at home and there's a picture of me somewhere. I'll pop it up, but there's a picture of me in the hospital trying to walk around with the walker and it's a mess. <laughs> but I remember when they told me eight or nine months, I was like, oh, that's not that bad. You know, I can deal with it. It's been almost three and a half years and I still have a brace. Continuing on with this story, I was out of school for about, I'd say four to five weeks. I went bowling with my fifth grade class. I, we were in fifth grade and we had like a Valentine's Day party and it was bowling. And I remember that was the first time I had seen anybody since and everybody was like shocked because I looked crazy. I'll insert you some pictures there, but I got to see my friends again. It was really fun. Obviously I couldn't bowl. I just went for the day and my mom like stayed and stuff, but I just got to see my friends and I didn't go to school, back to school for a few more weeks after that. Um, but after I went back to school, I only started going for half days up until I believe it was spring break. I only started going to for half days. And so this is another fun story, <laughs> but spring break was miserable for me. I hated spring break. It was horrible. I couldn't do anything. I was so excited for this trip before my surgery. It was Cancun, Mexico, and I was super excited. And it was devastating to me that I couldn't do anything. There's so many videos of me just like looking super sad. And there's like, I couldn't get in the pool. I couldn't swim. I couldn't go on the beach. It was rough. It was really rough. That was definitely one of the worst um, times ever, but it sucked a lot, but I, I got over it, I was fine. <laughs> but that entire trip, um, I'll just put up a bunch of pictures. I did was not happy, it was not fun. <laughs> um, I remember we went to like the Mayan ruins on the pyramid and I was so upset because everybody else was like hiking to the top and I was just like standing three steps up being like, oh, look where I am. I went back to school after that. You know, fifth grade was super fun. It was great and I love fifth grade. It was actually one of my favorite years. My teacher was awesome, I loved her. I, I missed like the last hour of the day every day until like the last few weeks of school just cause it was what we called specials which are basically expos and I couldn't do PE and I didn't really, I missed so much of them. It was kind of pointless for me to go so I just got checked out early every day and it was fairly easy. It was nice that I could leave early. But I remember one of the last days of school was fifth grade farewell. And this is something that every fifth grader always looks forward to especially at my school because it's super fun. And we, I remember we went to the high school that our school feeds into and we got like Kona ice, we got to swim, play in the gym. And I just vividly remember it sucking so bad because my friends obviously I couldn't do anything. I couldn't swim. So I was just kind of sitting there with the teachers because I know my friends like they obviously wanted to go have fun. So I was like, okay. And one of them offered to sit with me and I was like, no, go have fun. So I was just like sitting there with the teachers and it was kind of like, oh yeah, because they, I don't know. but. I remember going to the gym and the one thing that I remember like thinking that I could play like a little bit was volleyball. Both of the teams were fighting over not having me on their teams. And now I understand like obviously like no one would want me on their team because I was wearing like this huge back brace but they were both fighting over who got me because no one wanted me on their team and that was fun. <laughs> In June is when swim team starts and so I got cleared to do swim team and I was super excited. In around June 2, I also got my neck part of my brace off, which was also very exciting. Swam the entire summer for swim team and I had a blast. It was super fun. I obviously couldn't do as much as like I used to be able to. In June, I got my big brace off with the neck piece. I got the neck piece off and I remember being so excited. But what they didn't think would happen is that with the brace, I was trying to heal. So it was constantly hunched like this and um, that caused me to have super bad ky kyphosis and I had about an 85 degree kyphosis curve, which is a lot. And then I also had about a 45 scoliosis curve. So they were trying to fix both of those um, at that point. And um, my doctor gave me, I, they just took the neck piece off for a few weeks, about a month until July, I got a new brace. 
and it was basically just a white piece of plastic and then it had a big like felt not felt but it was like a harder material piece and a piece of velcro that you just pulled across and they started with like lighter intensity which i wish they would have just gone full right immediately because um i still had a bunch of pain and i was very tight in my back so they wanted to go but i could knew i could have handled it and i wish they would have done it because it would have been another five six months that to now could have been getting better i had that from july until around december ish and in december i got a new brace it was basically almost identical to this one but it was smaller and it looked just like this three straps of velcro and this is the higher intensity one but um it was galaxy don't know why i did that i made a very bad decision getting galaxy we had my first mri in december because i have yearly mris in december to make sure that the cysts are coming back in the fall i started playing volleyball again and i was kind of back to my normal life except for the brace wearing so this is where um i'm assuming a lot of people can relate i still to this day have to wear a brace and it sucks i hate it it's horrible i've managed to for almost three and a half years so if anybody needs encouragement just know that you can do it i ended up getting a new brace the following year so in december 2018 and i got one last year in december 2019 which is the one i just showed you so i get them usually yearly as i grow out of them but right now i have an appointment in a few weeks and i don't know exactly um when i'm getting it off i remember last year they kind of said that i would be getting it off a year ago and then they said six months which would have been december and that didn't happen so I'm really hoping it's soon and I can start weaning off of it because I'm pretty positive I'm done growing but I'm just hoping that I can get it off soon because this has been the longest like thing ever and if I have it on this year this will be the fourth summer that I've ever had it on to put it in perspective I've had it for four Valentine's days like four St. Patrick's days like so it's been almost three and a half years that I've had it on and if I have it this summer it'll be the fourth summer and I am not excited about it because it just limits the amount of things that I can do because I always have to be like, oh, I have to go back and put this on and go back home and like, because I do so many activities. Like I do swim team, I do swimming, volleyball, and I train six days a week. So it just limits the amount of things that I can actually do because I have to constantly wear it. So yeah, that is kind of like the full retrospect of my story. And I thought it would be helpful to anyone maybe going through something similar. My case was very rare, so it probably won't be very similar, but um to anybody that needs advice you can always dm me on my instagram at makeup by ava gwen but if you ever need advice help or anything just dm me there so yeah thank you guys so much for watching this video be sure to like it if you like it subscribe and hit that notification bell and be sure to comment down below more video recommendations um i think i'm gonna be doing some makeup videos soon so that should be exciting also be sure to follow me on my instagram at makeup by ava gwen and as always i hope you guys have a great day and i'll see you guys later bye